master. And then it calls it calls for di for direction, and it does step by step many uh, iteration, and then it writes the output file. Okay, so you can have an idea of where, in case of error, you got you get your error. Everyone has a, the flow the flow gear map. Yes. Okay. <coughs> So we can go and see that. We can find these in output, scalone, geomorphology. We found two files. One is Flaudir, well, four files. One is the pet filler, and it creates not only the raster map. Dot IC, but it also writes the uh, projection file. And then it creates the flow here, which is the one that we just did. And we can open the flow here map, just dragging and drop in, uh, in uh, our uh, visualization tool. For now it is QGIS, but we can change it. And you find a very nice field, which is the, uh, the DM, it is varying between uh, 14 up to uh, 1,000 and something. Uh, you can read it for here, no? So those are our elevation. And the flow direction varies between 1 and 8, because those are the code that you assign to your direction. You, you remember the coding system? Yeah. So first one like this, and then it goes. Yes? One question. In the GeoDiff format, there is only one file because the projection is embedded in the file. Great. Good. good answer, very good task. Uh, so you all, all know this, so the ASH file doesn't have embedded the projection system, while, whereas when you write or work with GeoDiff, it is already there. If you work just with TIFF, then you have a problem and you need another file. So, okay, already from the flow direction, you can just see some, some information about your basic, you know, and a little bit more clear respect to the DM, you know. But we don't stop here. Then, uh, as uh, the theory uh, lesson of yesterday told you, uh, usually this uh, system here of uh, eight drainage direction uh, is not always correct. And uh, uh, as far as you move downstream, uh, your uh, rear drainage direction differs from the drainage direction of this, uh, uh, of this formulation. No? Because here we are uh, forcing our uh, water to fall down just across uh, eight direction, whereas in your opinion, uh, how many are the direction in which the water can fall? Infinity. Infinity. Good. In fact, there is another algorithm, which is uh, uh, the d infinity instead of d8. No? And the author of this, uh, of this algorithm is uh, David Talbot uh, as well. Um, but the D infinity has some problem as well because it's too much dis dispersive, you know? Uh, and, and finally, we have the one, the algorithm. We also implemented the algorithm of uh, uh, Stefano Bandini, uh, which is uh, one that works uh, pretty well. And so uh, what we do now is to correct our drainage direction computer uh, with the eight topology, which the method of uh, Stefano. Okay, is it clear for anyone? Yeah. Okay, so we go to open number three. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and if we analyze our, uh, if we analyze just the first part of the of the sim file, probably you sh you see something different with respect to the other one. You see it or not? Yeah. No? You you can go back and forth between two and four and you, uh, between two and three and you will see it. We have more input. Yeah. <coughs> we have more components? We have more components. And in particular, we have more inputs and more outputs. Okay, more inputs, why? Because the component needs two raster maps, not one. The first raster map, uh, well, it reads the flow direction, reader flow, because we want, uh, and those are the flow direction computed with the eight topology. But it also needs the pit, the pit, the, the pit at them, let's say, the, the initial elevation model, because he has to correct according the elevation uh, the drainage direction. Is it clear? Okay, so it needs two, two, and also it provides you two outputs. One is the corrected drainage direction. And the name of these will be drain here. And the other one is the total contributing here. Do you all know what the total contributing area is? Right. If we still have a like a bigger map, like this, a raster map, what is the total contributing area uh, of this? Pixel? What, what, what is it? Do you have an idea? Do you have an idea here? No? Yes. Okay. And what it is? The number of cells. The number of cells. Perfect. Okay. So, here we specify the parameters, which are the uh, path to the pit filler, the path to the flow direction. Then we specify the uh, path to the writer, and we will write two files. The one is drain deer, which contains the drainage direction. The other one is the total contributing. In your opinion, what is the range of drain deer? So the value that we write in that map are varying between one to eight. Uh, the total contributing area, we know that it varies between what? One, because it drains, the, each cell it drains cells, <coughs> and uh, a maximum number, which could be the area of the biggest area of a basin. And then we specify the connection. The connections are more or less clear. So the output of the two readers will be the input of the drain deer uh, component. And then the output of the drain deer component, which are two in this case, will be the input of the two writers' components. One is for drain deer and one is for TC. Clear? Good. So you are ready done? The run. And probably it will be created soon. So we will uh, visualize drain here first. And it's more or less the same and it changed only in few pixels. And then we can visualize uh, the total and you can see from TCA that the, the network is more or less 
Do you have an idea of the network, of the river network, of your uh, study? Do you have any questions? She's asking for what, what, what is the your mean exactly? How, what uh, contributing areas so I want? Can you, uh, can you repeat the question? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I want to, uh, 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 to clarify the uh, second. Uh, the number said the total co uh, contributing. Total contributing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we, we can look it from here, no? It will be more clear. Suppose that we have we are in this sense, number one, and this is a source sense, no? Uh, then below, so those numbers are the drainage directions. So we know that this sense has total contributing area one because uh, uh, each cell drain in itself. No? So we don't start from zero, we start from one. Then we read the drainage direction. Okay. So we know that this number is three. According to our topology, three is like we are moving in this direction. You can look it from the, the left. So these cells has a total contributing area equals to two because it's the one uh, half slope and its sense. So one plus one. Then we read the uh, drainage direction, which goes three. It goes against like this. And so this one will be three. And go, and, and you can go. So your total contributing area became bigger and bigger, whereas you are moving from up slope to down slope. In fact, you can see that this number increase. Good? Yes. You see that you can see that in the layers, they are dot zero. Is there a reason for that? Like for instance, this five point zero instead of five, you know that is it. Isn't that added to okay. a lot of information that is not uh, No, it's just that probably the the printer is set it up to print it out because because it receives an image, it converts it. Okay. It's just a out print uh, print out. Uh, Because you were expecting seven, whereas you yeah. find seven point two. I guess that the uh, number of kilo or kilobytes that is with an integer would be shorter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this could be. Do you have any questions? Is everything okay? Yeah. So we can move forward if you are not okay. Then we can open number four. I don't know at what time uh, we have to stop. Ten minutes. <laughs> Ten minutes. Okay. Uh, okay. So we will. Uh, we will um, go off. Uh, here we have a uh, markout. Uh, markout that is uh, uh, a component which is uh, uh, just useful 
Why? Because the name explains it. So uh, what it does is just marks your output. So you have your uh, uh, map with your drainage direction. If it is uh, the last, it is going out of your uh, uh, region. It means that is an outlet, and then uh, you flag that outlet in. Uh, you assign a flag to that outlet. Okay. So in order to uh, make the, co the program understand that in that pixel the water is flowing out of some some place of your region, then you mark it. Okay, so we are not doing any special here. We are reading our uh, drainage direction map. When I speak about drainage direction now, I'm speaking about the corrected one. Yeah. Okay, not the first, not flow deer, but drain deer, because the, those are better. And then from drain deer, we mark the outlet. And we label the, the outlet with a special flag, which is number 10. Cool. So what we need? We need three components. We have to read our drain direction. We have to execute mark outlet. And then we have to write the output of mark outlet. Good? But we have only one outlet of uh, flow. No, no, that it is, it is not always true. Because for example, in our, in our case here, you have different rivers that are going out of your, uh, you see here? Oh, okay. So when you already have extracted your basin, then you are right. Yes, okay. But here is not, because we want to start from scratch. Usually you start, you start from this situation, and then you extract your own river. Basically, mm -hmm. okay. Is it all clear? If yes, we can run. And then we have our mark outlet uh, which in practice has, uh, is the same of the drain deer, but so they are drainage direction, but with the outlet mark. So if we drag and drop deep, we do it. Okay, let's do the last, uh, let's do the last things, which is the network extraction, and finally, and then uh, after uh, lunch, we will start to extract our basin. Okay, so now we compute the river network for the whole region that we have. And after lunch, we will just focus, cut our basin, and we perform all the computation. Uh, so as, as we were, uh, as Professor Yvonne were saying yesterday, we have three, uh, we have three ways to extract your network implemented in the in the Orton machine. The first way is the most simple. Uh, my network starts when my total contributing area is higher than a threshold, and the threshold if, is fixed by the user. Okay. So you just make these arguments. It goes from pixel and pixel, and when the, and it reads the total contributing area, if that total contributing area value is higher than the threshold, I mark that pixel with the number two, because it means it is uh, a river. Otherwise, it will be a hill. Okay. Then the other more, th there are also more complicated uh, things to do. Uh, for example, you don't just base your uh, initiation of the sun of the channel. Uh, you don't use uh, just the total contributing area, but you can use uh, uh, other information. Another example is uh, uh, the ratio between the uh, slope and the total contributing area, for example. So those are methods that you you can use. 
Uh, in that case, uh, you have to provide another threshold value, whereas the, the one with the total contributing area is more uh, easily to image, no? because I just, uh, the, the river starts when my upslope area is higher than uh, three kilometers, 100 kilometers, or whatever. The other, the other methods are less uh, imaginable. And so we use the first one. <coughs> but you can change, okay? Here, for example, we, we are using a threshold of 800 uh, cents. No? If, if, uh, uh, my, if I am a pixel and my total contributing area is higher than 800 cells on my slope, then I will be a channel. Otherwise, I will be a slope. But also, the size of cell? This depends also on the size of cell. Yeah. But the, 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 the input is the number of cells that you why? Why? Because you can use the raster for different resolution, so you cannot provide easily. So this is independent. Uh, so the programmer choose to make it independent of your uh, raster resolution. No, he just wants the number of cells. Then your raster resolution will be uh, 100 uh, uh, meter. Then you have to to understand the area. You have to multiply by 100 times. Uh, size of cell is based on uh, raster resolution, resolution. Oh. which depends on you because you can use a one meters uh, high resolution yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. so here you just provide the number of no. cells if you want to know what area uh, you have you have to multiply times the uh, resolution of your cell sure. so if the threshold is one all the array is covered all the so all the domain is channel yeah Yeah. What is the TC3 uh, component? Is that a core vector that we have any calculated so far? Yeah. We will compute it. It's topographic. But uh, where are you? In the components? Ah, uh, in the L. No. No. In the fine so that the afterwards is not useable. Yeah. It's slow. Yeah, because I commented here. Yes. Okay, yeah. because those are different yeah. methods. No? If you go in the uh, description in the PDF, you will find the different methods you can use. And as I say, for now we just use the pressure on the total. But if you want to use another one, you can just. Yeah, yeah. And also the output will uh, change. The, the method uh, is defined uh, uh, only to, uh, from the input that the function. Uh, yes. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. So you can find this. Uh, you can find this one that is commanded, which is the mode. Ah, okay. So okay. if you know, if, if you if if want so by to default, change the mode, uh, you must. Uh, Uncomment this line and, and you choose the, TCA okay. and slope, for example. But <coughs> by default, you use the total contribution. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, for, for the example, I would suggest you to don't modify the cells just because if you use this setup. Uh, we get the same, all, all together we get the same number of sub-basins. If you modify this threshold, probably you will get less or more sense. So for now you don't change, but on your own you can do whatever you like. For uh, extract net network as a component, we had uh, contribution area, the slope and flow, flow, what was that? Yes. Which uh, file we use for that? Okay. So uh, we were just saying that uh, there are different methods mm -hmm. to extract the network. Yeah. One is based on the uh, ratio between slope and TCA. Uh -huh. One is based on the topographic class. So uh, according to the code, mm -hmm. uh, that we will compute later. 
by the world. But uh, uh, we have three methods. Here, the script is done for uh, allowing you to use uh, each one of these methods. Okay? So we, we declare all the components. But we are using just the first one, based on the TCA. If you want to use only another one, therefore only we give the uh, uh, the threshold on the PC. Okay. But if you want to use uh, uh, another one, you can just decommand this uh, P mode, uh -huh. which is now commanded. And then, for example, if you decommand it, yeah. you will use the uh, TCA and slow option. But don't decommand it because if you use that mode, you need also the slow. Otherwise, he but we have it, huh? Not yet, because we will compute it for the, just for our basis. Okay. I have a question regarding the uh, mapping algorithm. Mm -hmm. Because I see a map which doesn't resemble uh, so clearly the output. Mm -hmm. Because I expected mm -hmm. a sort of shape file would be just the outlets of the whole network. Okay. So no. How does it work? This? Yes, it just uh, provides you uh, if if you uh, if you look at the, your border and the, and the water flow down the region, okay, then uh, it it marks this as output. So it puts there the number ten because this region just belongs to one big river basin. You don't find any base any output. Okay, but this doesn't mean the outlet of the basin that you want to work with, because we still have to arrive there. When when we arrive there, then you just extract your your river basin. Uh, I'll show you here. Uh, uh, okay, you see, uh, for example, uh, what you wanted to if you want to just extract this basin here, mm -hmm. then you have to provide the outlet coordinate and we will just use this one. Okay. But, but we are not yet there. Okay. Okay. Uh, we need a little bit more. Thank you. So for now, we just extract the network for uh, all the computational area. And then so later we will need. Okay, if you have extracted the network, you will find the network here. Uh, in the out, put, and you can drag and drop this. And so, so those are the cells uh, which, for now, for us, are charming. Okay, and those are labeled by a uh, convention number, which is number two. So if you see your map, it, it is uh, just number two. And no value where it is not a channel, it is not a channel which means it is a Yes? Uh, the TCA is state for the total? Total contributive yes. period. Yes? Are there uh, some uh, uh, optimal trace of the value? Or if I would like uh, to change uh, the basin, do I only have to run uh, several simulations? Usually, yeah. Usually this is a, a, good, uh, a good question because uh, uh, or you have to uh, digitalize your network for uh, an auto auto, for example, and then you have the channel network, and then you you, you vary your threshold until your file, this file, looks like that. It becomes yeah. uh, and this is the most uh, powerful, but also time consuming. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can have a little bit Yeah, in theory, you should do a more careful analysis, but this also stands on you uh, depending on your objectives because uh, if it's just the scope of, uh, of giving the 
the hydrological response in the place where you have hundreds of HR use. The exact determination of the initial of the channels cannot be so important. But actually, in the small catchment, can be important. But uh, even more important, actually, from the hydrological point of view, would be having uh, the idea how the sub surface and surface water uh, interact each other. And so, is matter also of the model, the ideological model that you will be using. It is matter of um, investigation anyway. I think it's uh, done, then later we will start with uh, the extraction of uh, our home basin. And, and we continue. And then uh, you can play with your DM. Uh, if you have any other questions.